very good morning everyone from today's session we shall move on with module 3 which deals with digital modulation techniques let us see what are the contents in this module so in this module we will be discussing about uh, phase shift keying uh, modulation technique where, under which we will discuss coherent detection and generation and we will also derive the probability of error for binary phase shift keying technique followed by we will discuss quadrature phase shift keying mra psk and mra qam that is quadrature amplitude modulation okay after that we will move on with frequency shift keying under which we will discuss coherent detection generation and also the derivation of probability of error followed by non-coherent detec detection techniques under which we will study uh, FSK, DPSK representation, their block diagrams and probability of error. But here we will not be deriving the equation for probability of error. We will just be comparing the equations of the probability of error for non-coherent technique with that of coherent techniques. Okay. Now, first and foremost, let us uh, understand what is modulation and why modulation is required and uh, what are the difference between uh, analog modulation and digital modulation right so as you are already aware we human beings can uh, hear audio in audio frequency range god has designed us to hear the frequencies in audio frequency range can someone tell me what is the audio frequency range in the chat box what is the audio frequency range yes please type your answers in the chat box what is the audio frequency range it is from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz very good sahana ji subhash kumar chirant good so that is the audio frequency range so only if the frequencies are in this range that is 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz we can uh, hear it and any frequency above or below this it is not interceptable uh, for our ears right so uh, thus our information or message signal in should be in this frequency range that is from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz right so uh, at the transmitter we will transmit the signal and at the receiver we will receive the signal uh, through modulation but before we go to modulation let us understand why actually modulation uh, came into picture so for transmission of the signal over antenna for long distance communication the transmission for transmission of the signals reliably successfully over antenna for long distance communication the height of antenna should be h is equal to lambda by 4 now suppose i want to transmit a signal in this frequency range that is between 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz say 15 kilohertz if I want to transmit this signal without modulation, what will be the lambda value that I'll get? It will be 20 kilometer and H will be equal to lambda by 4 that is equal to 5 kilometer. Now, as you all know, to design an antenna of height 5 kilometer is not practically possible and it is not even feasible also. So therefore, if I want to transmit 15 kilohertz signal, which is a audio frequency signal without modulation, my antenna height required would be 5 kilohertz and uh, such a design is not possible it is a impossible design okay thus what is the solution the solution is uh, found by looking at the equation of frequency and wavelength as you all know frequency is equal to c by lambda where c is the speed of light and lambda is the wavelength so here if i look at the equation of uh, h that is uh, the height of antenna it is equal to lambda by 4 so if i want to decrease the if i want to decrease the value of h what should i do i have to decrease the value of lambda and how can i decrease the value of lambda by looking at this equation so here as per this equation you can clearly see that lambda is in the denominator and uh, sorry lambda is inversely proportional to frequency therefore if i want to decrease lambda what should i do to the frequency 
what should I do to frequency? I have to increase the value of frequency. When I increase the value of frequency, lambda will decrease because this component C, that is the speed of light, velocity of light is constant. Therefore, if I want to decrease the value of lambda, I have to increase the value of frequency. So how can I increase the value of frequency? The technique or the method that I can adapt for increasing the frequency uh, is referred to as modulation. So what are we doing under modulation? We take a low frequency signal, which is a message signal, which is a low frequency signal, and we will take a high frequency carrier signal. And now what we will do is we will superimpose our message signal on top of your carrier. So your message signal is superimposed like this, isn't it? Like this to the top and bottom. So it becomes an envelope, right? So what type of modulation scheme is this? You have studied this in your earlier semester, isn't it? This is amplitude modulation. Now, this amplitude modulated signal, uh, which is a modulated signal, has a frequency of approximately 1 megahertz, right? So your message signal frequency was around 15 kilohertz. The carrier signal frequency is 1 megahertz. Now, after modulation, the <coughs> modulated signal frequency is around 1 megahertz. Now, what is the effect on <coughs> what is the effect on the value of lambda? Let us see. Now, what is the frequency of the signal? It is almost 1 megahertz. Thus, if I compute the value of lambda, it will come to 300 meter. And if I compute h, which is equal to lambda by 4, which is equal to lambda by 4, h will be equal to 75 meter. Now, to design an antenna of height, 75 meter is practically feasible and possible. Thus, thus this is the very reason why we go for modulation, right? So that I can transmit the signal for long distance communication using antenna by increasing the frequency. So I'll superimpose my message signal on top of carrier and I'll increase the frequency. When I increase the frequency, lambda decreases and thus my antenna design becomes uh, practical and possible. And along with uh, the reduction in the antenna size, if we go for modulation, we will also get some other benefits. Number one, we will also radiate more power from our antenna if I go for uh, modulation. How? If you look at the power radiated formula, it is inversely proportional to lambda. So when I go for modulation, I will increase my frequency. When I increase my frequency, lambda decreases. And if you look at power radiated, it is equal to L by lambda, where L is the length of antenna and lambda is inversely proportional. So therefore, by going for modulation, I am also increasing the power radiated by the antenna. I'm increasing the capacity of the antenna to radiate more power. And along with that, when we do modulation, say suppose this is one antenna which is uh, transmitting two megahertz signal and I have another antenna which is uh, transmitting six megahertz signal, we will have sufficient difference between these values. Thus, our receiver will be easily able to differentiate two signals received at two different two different frequencies and we can easily demodulate it right so thus we will avoid interference or crosstalk when we go for modulation and finally as you all know the transmitted signal uh, will be captured by your receiver and your receiver will perform demodulation when when i say demodulation what are you doing you are basically split, splitting your message signal and carrier and this is message signal is given to the loudspeaker that is your actual audio or information fine so that's about modula modulation and demodulation and coming to types of modulation we can categorize it into analog and digital under analog, the three important modulation techniques are AM, FM, and PM. And we have other variants, which are basically uh, modifications of these uh, three variants. Similarly, under digital modulation, we have amplitude shift keying, frequency shift keying, and phase shift keying, right? ASK, FSK, and PSK, right? Now, if I talk about analog modulation techniques, please pay attention and understand this carefully. This is also important for your lab viva. When I talk about analog modulation techniques, here my message signal, this is M of T, which is the input modulating signal. If you look at the shape of my message signal, it is a sinusoidal signal, isn't it? 
it is a sinusoidal signal then your carrier is also a sinusoidal signal when i talk about analog modulation scheme and then this is your am where uh, amplitude is varied in accordance uh, amplitude of message is varied in accordance with the amplitude of the carrier by keeping frequency and phase constant and similarly you have fm and pm right right so here the important point to note is both your m of t and c of t both your m of t and c of t are sinusoidal signals in the case of analog modulation but in the case of digital modulation these are the three variants that i talked about ask fsk and psk and if you look at the message signal input modulating signal in the case of digital modulation technique if this is uh, m of t you can clearly see that this m of t is a pulse signal typically it will be pulse in some cases it will be a square waveform right so this is the main difference that we will have in the case of digital modulation techniques as compared to analog modulation techniques right so if you look at c of t c of t is a sign signal and then you will have ask fsk and psk right so the main difference between analog modulation and digital modulation is this that is in digital modulation your message signal is a pulse or a square wave but in the case of analog modulation your message signal is a sine wave right so carrier is same sign for both analog and digital but in the case of analog your message signal is sine but in the case of digital your message signal is a pulse or a square wave okay and this is the equation for your carrier signal where ac is the amplitude cos is the function uh, and then phi c is the the phase of the carrier and fc is the carrier frequency okay so that's about ask fsk and psk and this is your digital modulation these are your digital modulation techniques you can see this is one so typically one uh, logic one is represented by a carrier signal in the case of ask and logic zero is represented by almost zero amplitude signal theoretically we write it as zero volt but practically there will be small waveform or small signal with small amplitude like this it will not be a completely flat signal but its amplitude will be uh, negligible or very very less as compared to the amplitude of its counterpart that is logic one right similarly you have fsk and then psk and their representation okay fine now here i have uh, given the comparison of am and fm both are analog modulation scheme and this is your digital modulation scheme but here i have not given the label i want you to just look at the waveform and tell me which digital modulation technique is this please answer in the chat box whether it is ask or fsk or psk please give your answers in the chat box as you know you can these two are analog modulation techniques because message signal is a sinusoidal signal but this is a digital modulation technique because your message signal is a pulse waveform now i have my modulated output signal i want you to observe this and give me the answer in the chat box whether this is ask or fsk or psk you can unmute and answer or you can answer in the chat box yes give your answers in the chat box okay i have answers from chirant yashwan tanmay very good so this is your fsk frequency shift keying you can clearly see here logic one is represented by fc1 relatively high frequency signal and then logic zero is represented by a relatively low frequency carrier signal fc okay so that this is fsk right now moving on with qpsk as i told you in the beginning these are the three fundamental digital modulation techniques the other techniques are the modifications or derivations of these techniques right so coming to quadrature phase shift king here what we are doing is we are attempting to increase the data rate of our modulation technique right so i want you to please pay attention and listen carefully here in the case of earlier in the case of b p s k that is binary phase shift keying how many symbols did we have we had just one and zero so what we did under b p s k is we took our circle 
360 degree circle and since we had two symbols we divided it into divided by two and we got it as 180 right so thus what we did uh, here under bpsk was we represented logic one by zero degree phase shift signal and logic zero by 180 degree phase shift signal right and what was the bandwidth required the bandwidth required was just fc just fc okay this is what we did under bpsk now under qpsk what we are attempting to do is under qpsk under qpsk what we are attempting to do is we are attempting to fit in four symbols which are those four symbols zero 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 one one zero and one one so how many symbols do we have four symbols therefore our circle which has a degree of 360 will be divided by four which is in turn equal to how much 90 degree which is equal to 90 degree so therefore i can represent zero by zero degree phase shift zero one by 90 degree phase shift one zero by 180 degree phase shift and one one by 270 degree phase shift 270 degree phase shift okay now in the process what did i do i have increased my data rate uh, by almost uh, four times because uh, here I was able to send only two bits, but here I am sending how many bits? Eight bits, right? So each symbol is of two bit size, but here each symbol was of one bit size, but here I have uh, four symbols and each symbol is of two bit size. So totally eight bits are transmitted. And what is the bandwidth required? The bandwidth required is still the same. That is BW is equal to FC, right? So this is the advantage that we get when we go for quadrature phase shift keying, wherein we will be utilizing the same amount of bandwidth, but we are able to fit in more data. Okay, so this is particularly useful in practical applications. In fact, in your TV set of box, this is one of the fundamental technology that is used. Okay, typically QAM is used. I'll come to QAM in a minute. Okay, quadrature amplitude modulation scheme is used. I'll come to that in a minute. Now here we are able to fit in eight symbol, eight symbols. Uh, sorry, eight bits. Similarly, if I want to increase the capacity of QPSK, if I want to increase the capacity of QPSK, I can go for fitting in. How many symbols 16 symbols so i can begin with zero 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 and i can have one 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 so totally how many uh 16 bits and totally i'll have eight symbols so if i want to fit in eight symbols what is the angle associated uh, with each of the symbol it will be 360 divided by eight and that will be equal to how much 45 degree so in this way by dividing the angle into smaller portions i can enhance the capability of qpsk to 4 bit or 6 bit or 16 bit or 32 64 128 or 256 and so on thereby uh, increasing my data rate but the bandwidth occupied will still be the same okay so that is the advantage of qpsk and this is the diagram of QPSK. You can see we have four uh, symbols. Each symbol is of uh, two bit size and you can see their associated uh, angles. So if for zero, zero, I have zero degree phase shift. For one, zero, I have uh, 180 degree phase shift. And for zero, one, I have uh, 90 degree phase shift. And for one, one, I have 270 degree phase shift which is nothing but minus 90 degree phase shift right so this is these are the four angles and here instead of 0 90 180 and 270 you can also consider angles such as 45 degree 135 225 and 315 or 30 uh, 120 or uh, 210 and 300 right so the only uh, criteria is you should have a difference of 90 degree phase shift okay between each symbol okay so that's about qpsk and uh, how are we 
computing QPSK, we will have an in-phase signal and a quadrature phase signal. And then both are combined together to produce a symbol which is of two bit size. So this is one one here. One one is represented by zero degree phase shift. Zero zero is represented by 180 degree phase shift. And then zero one is represented by 270 degree phase shift. And one zero is represented by 90 degree phase shift. Okay, so you have that luxury to have different phase shift for different symbols of your desire. There is no hard rule that uh, for zero zero you have to transmit zero degree phase shift only, right? So depending on your need and requirement for a particular symbol, you'll fix a particular uh, angle and then you will transmit that. And the same information should also be available to the other party if we are using coherent detection scheme. Okay, so that's about QPSK. Moving on with quadrature amplitude modulation scheme. This quadrature amplitude modulation scheme is very, very important. All of you, please pay attention and listen carefully. This quadrature amplitude modulation scheme is nothing but combination of, it is nothing but combination of QPSK plus ASK. Right, so it is a combination of QPSK and ESK, which combines the capability of phase shift and amplitude shift keying together to increase the data rate. Okay, so uh, this is the example you can see here. Uh, we are able to fit in uh, totally how many symbols? Eight symbols. Only four symbols are shown here for simplicity. But you can see we can fit in eight symbols ranging from zero 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 to one one one. And here you can see uh, this symbol. Uh, zero is represented by uh, a carrier output signal, modulated signal like this, which has a phase shift of zero degree. And here amplitude is say V. Okay, amplitude is say V, right? And if you look at this waveform here, we have a phase shift of how much? 180 degree. And here it is beginning with negative amplitude, that is 180 degree phase shift. And the amplitude of this signal is V. Okay, it is V by 2. It is half of the amplitude as compared to its previous symbol amplitude. And if I look at the next uh, uh, waveform, here the amplitude is V, but what is the phase shift? The phase shift is 90 degree. Okay, and here the phase shift is 270 degree or minus 90 degree. And what is the amplitude? It is V by 2. V by 2. So in this way, we have uh, taken the advantage of both phase shift and amplitude variations to fit in more symbols in the same available bandwidth. Here we are not at all increasing the bandwidth. The bandwidth is, will still remain the same. That is BW is equal to FC because as I've already told you in many other classes, bandwidth is a expensive commodity because the service providers have to pay few hundreds and thousands of crores for purchasing the spectrum or the bandwidth from the government. And once they procure it or purchase it, they have to utilize some efficient techniques. Uh, they should make use of some efficient techniques to utilize this bandwidth efficiently. And this quadrature amplitude modulation scheme one is one of the efficient techniques to utilize bandwidth because this combines the capability of PSK and ASK, right? So the example is shown in here. This is about quadrature amplitude modulation scheme. And this is one of the fundamental technique that is used in your TV set of box. In fact, after your class, if you have a TV set of box in your home, and if uh, you can find out the manual, you can or you can also turn the TV set of box and uh, to the backside, or you can Google the specification and you can find out that most of the TV set of box will fundamentally have quadrature amplitude shift keying as the modulation techniques may be coupled with some other modulation techniques such as Gaussian, FSK, etc. for a transmission of the signal in a complex communication channel with the added facilities. But fundamentally, it will be QAM. You can check it out after the class. OK, so that's about QAM. Moving on with uh, the next technique that is differential phase shift keying. This is a technique which helps us in achieving non-coherent detection. As you already know, non-coherent detection non-coherent detection is particularly useful when cost is a criteria. Whenever I want to 
design a communication system or a receiver where by keeping cost in mind i can go for non coherent detection but if the if i go for non coherent detection obviously accuracy decreases but uh, i'll be able to implement the system uh, with low cost and the system will be much simpler one such modulation technique which is tailor made for non coherent detection is differential phase shift keying right and the advantage of differential phase shift keying is as your as the name itself implies we will be performing differential encoding by using xnor or xor gate so it gives added encoding or security to our uh, signal before being transmitted and it also helps us in uh, decoding the signal using non coherent detection mechanism which reduces the cost required for implementing your receiver right uh, but there will be some uh, drop in the accuracy which is uh, which should be acceptable acceptable uh, for that particular application only then you have to go for dpsk okay so that's about dpsk and the last category uh, is mra modulation techniques now this mra modulation technique uh, is a technique which attempts to enhance the capability of ask psk fsk and qam by modifying their amplitude or phase or frequency okay so let me give you uh, some insight into what is mask uh, then you can easily connect the same with mpsk mfsk and mqam as we have already studied uh, bask bask is nothing but binary amplitude shift keying so here here the value of m was equal to 2 because your binary has two symbols 0 and 1 and here what did we do if we, uh, i was supposed to transmit one had the transmitted a signal which is same as that of my carrier and then if i want to transmit zero i had transmitted a flat signal of amplitude 0 volt right so this is v and this is 0 volt right so since i had only two symbols this is what i had done now if i and bandwidth required was bandwidth required was fc now i am asking you to use ask only but increase the capability of your ask by fitting in more uh, messages so here let me consider m is equal to 4 so if i consider m is equal to 4 what are the possible symbols 0 0 0 1 1 0 and 1 1 isn't it so here what i'll do is for transmitting 0 this is what i am going to 0 0 0 1 1 1 this is what i am going to do so please pay attention and listen carefully so for transmitting zero i'll send a zero signal so zero amplitude signal for transmitting zero one i'll send a signal whose amplitude uh is positive say v like this and for transmitting one zero i will uh, transmit a signal uh say which is uh, half of uh, v so here this is v by 2 okay then for 1 1 i can transmit a signal whose amplitude is say v by uh, v by 50% or 1.5 okay 1.5 so here if you pay attention what i have done is i have i have transmitted four symbols by specifying a certain amplitude for each of the symbol right so 0 is represented by 0 volt 0 one is represented by 1 volt and 1 0 is represented by v by 2 1 1 is represented by v by 1.5 for example right so in this way by increasing um, or decreasing my amplitude i am able to fit in more number of symbols in the same available bandwidth right so bw is still fc and i am able to transmit four symbols such a system is called mra ask or mask where m is equal to 4 okay so these uh, modulation techniques mra modulation techniques what they do is they enhance the uh data transmission capability by keeping the 
bandwidth requirement same but helping us increasing in increasing the data rate right however in practical applications uh, depending on the uh, communication channel we will either go for mask or mpsk or m fsk because as you all know because of the presence of noise noise will have impact on the amplitude of the signal so if i have a significant noise impact on these two signals the amplitude of v v by 2 may become v or it may even drop down to 1.5 or it may even become zero so you should be mindful of using m array ask or any m array modulation techniques uh, by considering noise right so depending on the type of communication channel that you have depending on the amount of noise impact on that uh, communication in that communication channel you will suggest a particular mra modulation technique okay so that's about mra modulation technique and its variants and then now beginning with phase shift keying using coherent detection as you are already aware phase shift keying is uh, typically is nothing but binary phase shift keying so this is the original or basic version of phase shift keying wherein you will have symbols one and zero and typically what we have done is logic one is uh, represented or transmitted by zero degree phase shift signal and logic zero is represented or transmitted by 180 degree phase shift signal okay and if i want to represent this in the form of equation uh, logic one is represented by a cos 2 pi fct and logic zero is represented by a cos 2 pi fct plus pi this pi is nothing but your 180 degree phase shift right so instead of writing pi what i can do is instead of writing pi what i can do is i can write minus sign because minus sign indicates that it is 180 degree phase shift okay so in this way by using just the frequency fc remember the bandwidth required is just fc in the case of fsk so i am able to transmit both 0 and 1 using the same bandwidth fc okay and how many uh, basis functions or carrier will i have carrier frequency only one that is fc or phi one and if i look at the demodulation typically psk demodulation is done using coherent detection scheme the advantage of psk is it is less susceptible to noise compared to ask and it requires same bandwidth as that of ask and it gives a uh, higher data rate as compared to fsk but the disadvantage is it is complex right and detection process is also slightly complex because we are going to go for coherent detection so i have to use same local oscillator right so this is the message signal this is the carrier signal and this is your psk modulated waveform logic one is represented by zero degree phase shift and logic zero is represented by 180 degree phase shift signal okay now if i look to illustrate these equation uh, these uh, waveforms in the form of equations i can say that s1 of t which is uh, equal to logic one is represented by root of 2 e b by t b this is the amplitude part and then s2 is equal to root of 2 e b by t b cos 2 pi f c t plus pi that is 180 degree phase shift or i can re rewrite this as minus the amplitude value right so for the bit duration 0 to tb okay so how am i uh, constructing my transmitter i'll take binary sequence 1 and 0 and i'll pass it through polar nrz as you all know polar nrz what it does is if it is if its input is uh, logic 1 it will assign positive voltage if its input is logic 0 it will assign negative voltage right so in this way we are uh, introducing 180 degree phase shift to the signal and then it is passed through product modulator which is multiplied by your basis function phi 1 of t which is equal to root of 2 by tb cos 2 pi fct okay so now what can i write as the equation for s1 of t in phi 1 of t i have root of 2 by tb remaining is root of eb so therefore s1 of t can be written as s1 of t can be written as what root of eb into phi 1 of t and s2 of t can be written as minus root of eb into phi 1 of t isn't it so uh, coming to the uh, receiver you will take x of t that is the received signal and you will use 
5-1-of-t, which was used at the transmitter. This is a coherent uh, receiver. Keep that in mind. And then you will pass it through product modulator followed by integrator, which is referred to as the correlator. And then it is given to decision device, which will have a predefined threshold. If the threshold value is greater than, uh, if the input signal to the decision device is greater than threshold, it will assign 1. Else, it will assign 0. Okay. So this is what I told you about. 5-1 is root of uh, 2 by TB cos 2 pi FCT. Therefore, S1 can be written as root of EB into 5 1 of T and S2 can be written as minus root of EB into 5 1 of T. So therefore, I will need just one basis function. Therefore, N will be equal to 1. Only one basis function is required. But M will be equal to 2 because we have two symbols 0 and 1. Okay, and as I've already discussed this in the earlier class, here in the case of uh, phase shift keying, I can have only one decision boundary, zero. Uh, any signal amplitude greater than zero, I'll assign logic one. Any signal amplitude less than zero, I'll assign logic zero, right? So this is the decision boundary where your threshold lambda is equal to zero. That is what is given in the block diagram here. So if your received signal x1 to the decision device is greater than zero, I'll assign one as shown in this diagram. If it is less than zero, I'll assign zero, right? So here, this is logic one, which is represented by positive amplitude signal or beginning signal beginning with positive amplitude. And for logic zero, we have a signal which begins with negative amplitude, right? So this is the signal space diagram of coherent BPSK system, okay? In the next class, we shall discuss about the probability of error of binary phase shift keying when we use coherent detection. This is uh, one of the very, very important derivations because 100% you will have one derivation on any of the modulation techniques for probability of error because probability of error is a very important metric which helps us in understanding how good is the receiver's performance when a particular modulation scheme is used okay so depending on the value of probability of error we will uh, the designer will select a particular modulation scheme by looking at the probability of error value and uh, here we will be focusing on deriving the equation for the average error probability of a binary psk system when we use coherent detection mechanism at the receiver okay so we should